This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from the thecreativedojo.net. Hope you're doing well out there. That is quick tip video, I wanna share with you guys how to create some dynamic colors within After Effects using expressions. This is a very interesting technique because you can actually control and manipulate colors using expressions to make your projects dynamic and live and responsive. That way when you change one color, things will be a lot more procedural and things will update throughout your whole composition especially if you have a set defined parameters for your colors within your project. So this is pretty cool. And I'll show you guys why this can be kind of useful in a real life example right here. Now, before we get started, I do want to talk about the fundamentals of the color property within After Effects. So I have an example composition right here that will kind of help demonstrate what I'm talking about right here. But basically stuff like fill, stroke color, particle color, the color controls under expression controls, all those things use the color property in After Effects. Now, the color property right here in After Effects expects an array value in this particular format, RGBA. This stands for red, green, blue, alpha. And these four parameters define the color that you see in After Effects. So this particular white right here is an array of one, 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 one. So the maximum red, the maximum green, the maximum blue, and the maximum alpha. So every property value in this array is from zero to one. And this whole array right here defines a color. And think of an array as a box or a container containing stuff, in this particular case, four values, RGBA. And so that's essentially how After Effects views colors. So I have this empty text layer that's kind of mapped to the fill color of this circle right here. So if I change the fill color of the circle to like an orange, you're gonna see that this text will change. And as you can see, this particular orange right here has a red value of one, a green value of roughly 0.75, a blue value of 0.299, and an alpha of one. And so these four properties right here define a color in After Effects, and this is kind of important. This is a little bit different if you're kind of used to like web colors where things are like from zero to 255. After Effects is a little bit different. They use values from zero to one. Now, if you're familiar with Lightroom, you're probably familiar with editing color in an HSLA format. So the RGB format is pretty conventional for displaying color, uh, but whenever we're kind of editing and manipulating color, it's a lot easier for us humans to kind of manipulate things in an HSLA format, which stands for hue, saturation, lightness, and alpha. Now, unfortunately, the color property does not really utilize the HSLA format. So if we do use an HSLA format of an array, we need to convert it back into an RGBA kind of format array so that After Effects can kind of understand it properly. And there are some built-in functions within After Effects to kind of utilize this. So this is just something to keep in mind right here. Let's go ahead and dive into a real life project to kind of see how this kind of all works together right here. So here I have a basic lower thirds. And basically what I want to do is whenever I change the color of the lower thirds, I want the shadow to change as well. Now notice how the shadow is the same color as my actual main lower thirds. It's just a little bit darker. So manually I have to go in here and go to the shadow, change the fill color to the same orange color and then darken it a little bit, right? And this is kind of a tedious process, especially if you have hundreds and hundreds of elements and you know they're all linked together. It'd be pretty cool if we can all link things together and just change one particular color and then everything else can kind of update procedurally. And this is what you can do with expressions. So I wanna go into my shadow right here and go under the fill color property right here. Go ahead and hit alter option on the keyboard to bring up the stopwatch and to type in an expression. And so what we can do is type a simple expression right here. So first of all, let's go ahead and get the color of our lower third. So, so I'm gonna say var for variable, RGB color, and this RGB color variable is gonna equal our lower third color, semicolon. Now, cool. Now, I don't like to manipulate things in an RGB format because it's not very useful to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert this RGB color into a different format, which is HSLA format. So type in var variable HSL color. And there's a built-in function for this called RGB to HSL. This is a built-in After Effects function right here. So we're gonna go and type in our RGB color. So we're gonna use this function called RGB to HSL function, and we're gonna convert our RGB color to HSL. So now we still have an array, but it's not the RGBA format, it's an HSLA format instead. 
And this is a lot easier now. So now we can go ahead and access the individual elements. So remember the HSLA format is an array of four values right here, HSLA. So if I just want to get the hue, this is the zero index, this is the one index, this is the two index, and this is the third index right here. So remember an array is a set of stuff. And so if we can go back into the expression right here, and if I wanna get the first part of my array, which is a hue, I can do a new variable called hue, and this is gonna equal our HSL color array zero. And this is gonna give us the first element of our HSL color array, which is the hue. Same with the saturation, var saturation is gonna equal HSL color one. And then our lightness is gonna equal our HSL color two. And of course, for completeness sake, our alpha is gonna equal HSL color three. And so now we have our hue, saturation, lightness, alpha. And we can actually manipulate this. And so we can go ahead and do whatever we want to this. So for example, if you know that you want to keep the hue and saturation the same, but I want to go and decrease the, the lightness of it, we can go ahead and do minus 0 0.3, for example. Because remember, everything's gonna be from zero to one. And so now that we have that, we can reconstruct it all together. So our new array, our new HSL array is gonna be brackets. This is an empty array right here. Our hue, our original hue is the same. Our saturation is the same. Our lightness is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be our original color minus 0.3. And of course our alpha. And so what we did was we, we extracted our original color we converted that array into an HSL format array, and then we broke it all down. We manipulated the individual elements, in this case, just the lightness, and we're reconstructing that array right here called hue, saturation, lightness, alpha. This is our original HSL, HSLA format array. And if we hit enter, we're not gonna get the same color that we expect, because remember, this color property expects an array in the RGB format, and this is in an HSLA format, right? So there's a built-in function to convert HSL to RGB, so in reverse. So we can type in our built-in function called HSL to RGB. And then we'll go ahead and input our new array within that function right here. So this is a built-in After Effects function, function, HSL to RGB. We'll insert in our new array that we had in the HSLA format and go ahead and hit OK. And just like that, our new shadow color right here is actually 0.3 less in lightness compared to the original color. And if I change the lower third colors to a red color, you can see that this shadow color is looking at this particular color right here, and it's going to decrease the lightness by 0.3, and that's gonna be our new color for our shadow. So now things are very, very dynamic. We can change to whatever color we want, and the shadow will update dynamically. And this is very, very, very powerful. And of course, you can always go in here and edit the hue as well. You can always go in here and edit the hue to 0.2. You can add some saturation to 0.5. And so you, know, you can go in here and do, really do some pretty cool stuff and get some pretty funky results. But you can always manipulate all the properties right here. And you can even add this to slider controls. So if you want to you know, mainly create this using some slider controls, you can actually link a slider control into this expression right here to really have some fine control over all the individual properties. Now it's important to note that if you try to loop over hue, because hue is typically from zero to 360 degrees, and this is mapped to zero to one. So it's a little bit confusing. Now you can't loop around the, the color wheel over and over and over again um, because you can't go above one. And so what you can do is you can actually, if you were using the slider control, make sure you do kind of like a modulus one to get the remainder of it so that you don't surpass one in the hue parameters. And so doing something like this, you can create some pretty powerful dynamic colors. This is just one basic example. But you can pretty much use this knowledge that you learned in this tutorial to really create some dynamic colors. This can be lower thirds, backgrounds, text, other graphics to really drive um, your colors this way. And you can even use this information to create really dynamic Mogertz templates and other templates using this technique so that things are more responsive and dynamic. Just another quick tip for you guys on how to manipulate color in After Effects and really understand how it kind of works. Before I go, I wanna give a quick thanks to our sponsor over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. 
Squarespace is the only platform to create an amazing website whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing things to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 25-hour support, and best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the DOJO, so check it out over at squarespace.com slash DOJO. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it guys, just a quick tip for you and after effects using some expressions. If you like this video, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos like this. My name is Vincent from the Creative Dojo. I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.